it's so weird to talk to you in your environment and have you talk back. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I get that. It's the same thing like when you meet people from Twitch for the first time. You're like, I'm, you're a human. You're not just like a, a being on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, friends. I'm Emily McVicker. And if you're interested in talking music gear, Twitch streaming, and home studio creation and maintenance, you're in the right place. Because this is Loop Chat. Loop Chat with Megan Lenius. Today I got the chance to have an awesome conversation with the one and only Megan Lenius. With Megan Lenius, the song loops and twitch and stuff like that. Megan is a fabulous musical talent and also such a gearhead. I know Megan through Twitch, but I actually got to meet her a couple months ago right here in Seattle when she played at Barboza with a bunch of other music streamers. This woman puts on such a good show. And today we're gonna get to talk to her about the tools she uses and the way that those tools have evolved to create what she does now. The seasoned streamer and Twitch ambassador, Megan, I'm so stoked to talk to you today. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk to you. Ooh. <laughs> you stream out of Min Minnesota, right? Oh, yeah, you betcha. Oh, yeah. I'm from Minnesota where we play ice hockey. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first instrument? Was it guitar? Yes, it was. We had, um, I got lessons. And I remember I begged my parents to do it. So I did lessons for five years. And then I like self-taught myself piano. Have you been streaming on Twitch for very long? Four years, almost five. Five years at the end of this month. Five years on Twitch, wow. Streaming on Twitch actually helped me, uh, that helped me learn how to loop. And I, I bought a loop station in the first week of streaming. It was like one of my very first donation goals was for an RC300. I got my very first credit card was a Guitar Center credit card. And so I bought the RC300 on the Guitar Center credit card. Just stopped working there, so I got discounts. Oh, perfect. That had to have been pretty um, yeah. satisfying for your audience to watch because you're like actively mm -hmm. you know, just figuring it out as you go. Yeah, that's one of like my biggest pieces of advice to people is like, if you're thinking about streaming, just start doing it because I think it's a community's, it's like they're one of their favorite things to help contribute to your stream and make it better. Then when you get a new camera, it's like, oh yeah, I helped you get that new camera. Like, oh, I helped you record that single and like do these things. It's like a direct attachment to you, your like growth and stream. So that was really like what my stream started as. I think the first stream that I ever tuned in of, of yours was the day you got that chair and you were writing people's <laughs> names on the back. It was like just a blank canvas and you were yeah. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> to break yeah. the <laughs> now it's like my sub chair is like one of my favorite things about my stream is that now everybody that subscribes is on there so this is like in the last like year and a half or oh so. man um, it's really cool to look at the chairs and have like a physical representation of like oh dang this is everyone that was like yeah i like you <laughs> yeah you got my <laughs> back heck yeah <laughs> your whole team is sitting mm -hmm. with you <laughs> Thank you. So where did that come from, that audience, that comfortability with a live audience? I played every coffee shop in the world <laughs> in Minnesota, like when I was in middle school and high school. Any opportunity that I had to be in front of people, I would, I would take it. That's the way that I seek attention, is from performing. And I think it's my way of also... Like it's my diary in mm. some stance. Music can affect people in no way that any, like any other form of art. It has a physical effect to people. There's a power behind that, I think. Why did you start streaming on Twitch? Was because, were you a gamer at all before? My friend Chase Eagleson, who's like one of the pioneers of the music community on Twitch. He kept telling me about streaming on Twitch, streaming music on Twitch, and he kept oh. telling me to do this. I started streaming and it was, um, that was, yeah, February of 2017. Then when you got your, your community supported you and you raised money for the RC300. And I had a tiny, I should grab it. It's a Vox 
single pedal loop station. Yeah, grab it. I want to see. Grab it. So this was my first loop station. It's a Vox Dynamic Looper. It's so hard to use. Is it? It is is not user friendly at all. It looks really sturdy. It is. It's incredibly (laughs) sturdy, and it's it has like really nice like the Vox the effects on it are really nice. Like I like the pedal. The pedal is very satisfying. I think everyone kind of designs their setup to suit their skills. You have such good time playing the guitar, and I actually I don't know how that you do it. Honestly, it's because I've streamed with a loop (laughs) station for five years. I would um, set my tempo on the RC300, and I would hear the drum track, and and then I would record my guitar bit, and then I would turn the drum track off, or I would record the drums on top of the drum track and then take the drum track off, like my own, you know, guitar drums or whatever else, and, you know, mix it that way. My guitar tech convinced me to get a Line 6 Helix. Oh, what does a Helix do? It's a really good quality like guitar effects processor. When Once I got the Helix, I was like, okay, because I, I, at that point I wanted to have better guitar effects. effects. You mentioned that on your stream, that you were seeking more effects. So I get three individual loop pedals <laughs> that are Jam Man. They're like the Jam Man single loop okay. pedals. But you you can MIDI sync them together. I think I had four of them. So I basically created a four-channel loop station with the Helix. And it was on the back of the Guitar Center ad. And I was like, Headrush Looper Board? Four tracks? A Headrush is a guitar yeah. processing company. What? I was like, holy crap. This is like, this is what I wanted. This is an RC300 mixed with a Line 6. You're the first person I've interviewed that has used the Headrush. And I've seen them in stores, but I haven't played one. It has four inputs. It has four outputs. You can map what those inputs yeah. and outputs do. You have, um, I have it back here in the background. But so like on this bottom. I can see it down there. Yeah, so this bottom. <laughs> That's such a cool cam. <laughs> thank you. So this bottom <laughs> little uh, thing down here is a Black Star Live Logic MIDI controller. And it's just a six button like MIDI um, pedal. The pedal board has your looping, chan- your looping okay. menu and then your effects menu. You can also have a billion different uh, profiles and things like that. It's a little bit more button tappy than the RC300, um, but I think it's worth it for the flexibility that you get. You can add a preset for vocals or guitar, lo-fi, dub, a bunch of different things. I can create a full distortion sound. I can add EQ with the distortion and I can compress it and I can add delay with it and I can do a whole like chain effects profiles for my vocals and a set for my guitar. And they have a forum of like people that go in and are testing like their beta programs and are really? like helping them make the looper better. I'm saying the head rush has like like software updates like like on a phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really the it is the closest that you can get to buying Ed Sheeran's loop station. <laughs> I got sent his video from his performance on The Voice a couple months ago. Maybe he was playing this humongous looper, and it had as it had as many buttons as mm-hmm. your looper, but it, they were big, like the old yeah. chunky Boss looper he, pedals. I've I've done a lot of research on his loop station, and he and his guitar tech. So they went to a bunch of different loop comp- like loop station companies uh-huh. and asked them to custom build a loop station for him and they all That's said a- no. So he created with his guitar tech a giant looper that has the buttons from the RC300 because he likes those buttons. Those are like from the RC20. Or yeah, okay, yeah, those- which is like his original like looper that he used oh. in like that first like viral video. But the head rush looper, that's essentially what they tried to do was create a condensed version of his like he has oh. a name for it. It's like the monster. It's the Chewy yeah. 2. <laughs> is that? Yeah, yeah, the Chewy 2. Yeah, I think that is, yeah. Because I was Googling mm-hmm. it. I don't think you can buy it. No, you can't. Yeah, it was custom made. Like, can you break down kind of in a nutshell the way that you've rooted your sound for your stream? I have my MacBook is running Logic, my piano sound and everything. That's all running into Logic. This is a uh, live Logic it's just a MIDI keyboard, okay. but it has uh, weighted keys. Does your mic plug in to, directly into your pedal board? I did at one point. Right now, I have a, I got this little guy. It's a Shure Green Bullet, 
and it's meant for harmonicas. Okay. I saw you use that at the show. Yeah, I love this guy. So I that was the first time that I used it. And so adding this was really nice because it's meant to be like yelled in basically. <laughs> and then I brought it in for here because I really liked the tone of it. Works, I think, really well with looping because it differentiates the background vocals from your like main vocals. <laughs> Shining armor in your move. That like old microphone sort of effect. Yeah. Is, just like has that with it. Yeah. Do you have any creative projects in the future that we should be looking out for? I have streams. I stream Tuesday through Saturday, 5 p.m. Central Time or 6 p.m. Central Time. Have you been in touch with Mike Shinoda at all? I haven't, no. But it is coming up on the year anniversary of Not Your Game. So, oh, I am trying to get Not Your Game to 200,000 plays. So stream Not Your Game. Okay, I will. Mm hmm. If Megan plays in a town near you, go see her. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I just want to thank Megan Lenny so mm -hmm. much for coming on and being a friend of mine on Twitch and here on YouTube. I just think you're the coolest. Thank you so much for having me, Emily. I think you're the coolest. Oh. I appreciate you. Thank you. Woo! I'm truly a fan of Megan's. I loved getting to talk to her. Let's all help her out and stream her song on Spotify, I'm Not Your Game. It's an awesome song, and it was produced by Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park. You would help Megan out if you streamed it just one time or added it to just one playlist. We're supporting independent music, which is awesome. If you found anything in this interview interesting, let us know down below in the comments what you liked, what you might want to hear more about, and any questions or comments that you might have for me or Megan. I'm going to leave a link to that Spotify single and also links to Megan's other social media channels so that you can follow her whole journey, including her Twitch channel. And full gear list with affiliate links down below in the description that help the channel if you click on them. Thanks for tuning in, friends. This has been another episode of Loop Chat. I'm Emily McVicker, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Sorry, it's the butthole cam. <laughs> um, when I when I walked into your show, I mean, we were all masked. I walked into your show and. I